Hello and welcome to the presentation on joints. Okay, a joint can also be referred to as an arthrosis or an articulation. It is the point of contact between two bones. Okay, it could be between a bone and a cartilage. Okay, or with the teeth. Okay, so and they are classified based on the anatomy and physiology. So anatomically, they are classified based on the anatomical characteristics, whereas functionally or physiologically based on the type of movements that they permit. So structurally, we have two factors. Number one, we have presence or absence of the space between articulating bones, the one that we refer to it as synovial cavity. So if a joint has a synovial cavity, we refer to it as synovial, synovial joint. But if it lacks, then it can either be categorized as either a fibrous joint or a cartilaginous joint. Okay, and this is based on the type of connective tissue that binds the bones, that binds the bones that are articulating together. So, functionally, or anat uh, that that's anatomically or structurally. Bones can, uh, joints can either be fibrous joints, we can have cartilaginous joints or synovial, synovial joints. So fibrous joints, they have no synovial cavity, but the bones that are forming the joints are held together by dense irregular connective tissues that are normally rich in collagen fibers. Cartilaginous joints, they also don't have synovial cavity like the fibrous joints. But for them, they are held together by a cartilage, whereas synovial joints, they have the synovial cavity and the bones that are articulating are joined by um, a dense irregular connective tissue of articular capsule and often accessory, accessory ligaments. Physiologically or... Um, Functionally, bo uh, joints are also classified into three groups, and they are normally abbreviated as SAD. A stands for senior arthrosis, ampia arthrosis, and D stands for diarthrosis. So, sign arthrosis, these are an immovable joint. Okay, uh, ampia arthrosis, these joints, this type of joints, they allow slight movement, and diarthrosis, these are synovial joints that allow free movement, okay, that is permitted in each case. So for now, let's start by the anatomical classification where the first group was the fibrous joints. And these fibrous joints, they can either be senior arthrosis, that is they allow, they don't, they are removable joints, they don't allow movement, or ampiarthrosis, they allow slight movement. So we say that uh, fibrous joints, they like synovial cavity and the articulating bones in this type of joints are held closely together by dense irregular connective tissue that is rich in collagen fibers. Fibrous joints also permit little or no movement. So we have three types of fibrous joints. We could have the sutures, okay, found in the scar, the syndesmosis, and the interosseous, interosseous membrane. Starting with the sutures, the sutures, for the sutures, we're saying that it's a fibrous joint composed of a thin layer of dense ir uh, irregular connective tissue. Sutures occur only between bones of the skull, okay? An example is the coronal suture, okay? The sagittal suture, okay? Yes, and, 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 and so many others. Can you please list down any four types of sutures that you know? Yes, so you find that um, a suture is immovable and therefore it is classified physiologically or functionally as senior sign arthrosis because they are immovable, they don't allow any type of movement. Remember some sutures are normally replaced during childhood by a bone in, a, in an adult. Sutures... Um, such as um, an example, we have uh, the sin, uh, sin, synostosis or bone joint. This is a joint in which there is a complete fusion of two separate bones into one bone. 
Hope you remember the frontal bone, okay, that normally grows in halves that, and then joins together across um, a suture line. So usually they are completely fused by age six and the suture becomes obsecure. But if the suture persists beyond age six, it's now called metopic, metopic suture. So a synostosis is also classified functionally as seen arthrosis because they don't allow any movement. The second type of fibrous uh, joint, apart from the, the suture, we have the syndesmosis. And the syndesmosis, these are fibrous joints in which there is a greater distance between the articulating surfaces. So we have more dense irregular connective tissue than in the suture. So the dense irregular connective tissue is typically arranged as a bundle or a ligament that the joint permits limited movement. So in this case, you find that the syndesmosis will be classified functionally as the ampere arthrosis because they permit slight movement. One example of a syndesmosis is the distal tibular fibula joint where the anterior tibiofibular ligament connects the tibia and the, the fibula. Another example of a syndesmosis is the gomophosis. That is the one that is found in our teeth. That is the dental alveolar joint in which there is a cone-shaped peg fits into the socket. So the only examples of gomophosis in the human body are the articulations between the roots of the teeth and their sockets, okay, in the maxilla and the mandible. So the dense irregular connective tissue between a tooth and a socket is the thin periodontal ligament, okay? So a gomophosis permits no movement and therefore it is classified uh, physiologically or functionally as a sin arthrosis because it doesn't allow movement. Remember inflammation and degradation of the gums, periodontal ligament and the bone is what we normally refer as the periodontal disease. The other classification of fibrous tissue is the intraosseous um, membranes. This is the final category of the fibrous joints that you know. So a substantial sheet of dense irregular connective tissue that binds neighboring log bones and permits slight movement. So interosseous membranes type of joints are ampere arthrosis. So there are two principal interosseous uh, membrane joints in the body. One that occurs between the radius and the ulna in the forearm and the one that occurs in the tibia and fibula in the leg, okay? Those are the two examples. So from the fibrous joints, you go to the cartilaginous joints and cartilaginous joints can be sign arthrosis, that is they don't allow movement and ampiarthrosis, they allow slight movement. Of course, we already know cartilaginous joints lack synovial cavity and they allow little or no movement. So the articulating bones are tightly connected by either the hyaline cartilage or the fibrocartilage. There are two types of cartilaginous joints. We have the synchrosis and the symphysis. So the synchrosis is this one is a, a type of a cartilaginous joint in which the connective material is hyaline cartilage. So an example of the synchrosis is the epiphyseal, that is the growth plate that normally connects the epiphysis and the diaphysis of a growing bone. So functionally, um, sign, sign chondrosis are sign arthrosis. They don't allow any movement, okay? Another example of a sign chondrosis is the joint between the first rib and the manibrium of the sternum. Okay. This normally ossifies, or ossifies during adult life and becomes an immovable joint. Okay, correct. The second uh, type of cartilaginous joint is the symphysis. So in this case, uh, if the ends of the articulating uh, bones are covered with the hyaline cartilage, so there is a fibrocartilage that connects the bones. So all symphysis occur in the midline of the body. So the pubic symphysis between the anterior surfaces of the hip bones is an example of the symphysis. This type of joint is also found at the junction of the manubrium and the body of the, of the sternum and at the intervertebral joints between the bodies of the vertebra. So the portion of the intervertebral disc is composed of the fibrocartilage 
a symphysis pubis or the symphysis is an ampiatrosis. It allows some slight move, movements, okay? The third classification of uh, joints anatomically is the synovial joints, and this one are named so because they have the synovial cavity, okay? So because the synovial cavity allows a joint to freely move, so all joints are classified functionally as diarthrosis. They allow free movement. So these bones, uh, the bones at the synovial joint are normally covered by a layer of hyaline cartilage that is called articular cartilage okay so the articular cartilage you have the articular capsule and this one surrounds the synovial joint enclosing the synovial cavity and uniting the articulating bones so the articular capsule is composed of two layers we have the outer fibrous membrane and the inner synovial membrane so the fibrous um, membrane usually consists of dense irregular connective tissue, mostly the collagen fibers that attaches to the periosteum of the articulating bones. While the fibrous uh, membrane is literally a thickened continuation of the periosteum between the bones. So the flexibility of a fibrous membrane permits considerable movement at the joint, while its great tensile strength helps to prevent the bones from dislocating, okay? Great. So from there we have the synovial fluid that is found in the synovial cavity. So and uh, it is the synovial membrane that secretes the synovial fluid. That is the inner layer, okay? And uh, the synovial fluid is viscous, it's clear, and it's pale yellow fluid. So it is named so because of its similarity in appearance and consistent to uncooked egg white. Synovial fluid consists of the hyaluronic acid, the one that is normally secreted by the fibroblasts like cells in the synovial membrane and the interstitial fluid filtered from the blood plasma. It forms a thin layer over the surfaces within the articular surfaces and its major function is just to reduce friction by lubricating the joint, absorbing shocks and supplying oxygen and nutrients to and removing carbon dioxide and metabolic waste from the chondrocytes within the articular cartilage. So we have six types of synovial joints. We have the pivot joint, hinge joint, saddle joints, plane joints, condyle joint, and ball and socket joint. Starting with the plane joints. So the articular, the, uh, the, uh, the articular surfaces of the bones in the planar joints are normally flat and slightly covered, curved. So planar joints are prim primarily permit back and forth and side to side movements uh, between the surfaces of the bones. So many Planar joints are biaxial because they permit movement around two axes. So an axis is what we say as a straight line ar around which a rotating or revolving bones moves. So examples of planar uh, joints could include the intercarpal joints, that is between the carpus uh, bones at the wrist, intertarsal joints, that is between the tarsals of the ankle, sternoclavicular joints between the manibram of the sternum and the clavicle and then you have the acromioclavicular joints between the acromion of the scapula and the clavicle we also have the sternocostal joints and also the va the vertebr vertebrocostal joints this all these are examples of the planar planar joints number two we have the hinge joints Okay, so the complex surface of one of the bones fits into a concave surface of another. As the name implies hinge joints, they produce an angular opening and closing motion, yeah, like a hinged door, okay? So in most joints, one bone re remains in a fixed position while the other one is the one that is moving around an axis. So hinge joints, they are monoaxial meaning that they typically allow motion around a single axis. So hinge joints permit only flexion and extension. Flexion, extension. Examples include the knee, okay, the elbow, the ankle, 
and the interphalangeal joints. We have the pivot joints. Um, this one's uh, we have one bone which articulates with a ring formed partly by another bone and partly by a ligament. So a pivot joint is a monoaxial because it allows rotation only around its own longitudinal axis. So examples are the at atlantoaxial joint, okay, in which we have the atlas that is rotating around its axis and permits the head to turn from side to side, as they say, like you're saying, no, 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 no. Or the radio ulnar joints that enable the palms to turn anteriorly and posteriorly. The fourth one is the condyloid joints, or they also refer to as the epi episodal joints. So here we have the convex oval-shaped protection of one bone fits into the oval-shaped depression of another. They are normally biaxial because the movement permits around two axes. We have flexion extension or abduction adduction. Examples best we have the wrist and the meta meta metacarpopharyngeal joints for the uh, for the second through the fifth digit. We have the saddle joints, okay, and in the saddle joints we have the articular surface of one bone is saddle shaped and the articular surface of the other bone fits into the saddle as a sitting reader will sit. So a saddle joint is a modified condyloid joint in which movement is what what uh, somewhat freer than uh, the condyloid bone. So saddle joints are triaxial, permitting movements around three axes. We have flexion, extension, abduction, adduction, and you also have rotation. Good examples will include the carpal metacarpal uh, joint between the trapezia of the carpus and the metacarpal of the thumb. The last type of synovial joint is the ball and socket. This one consists of ball-like surface of one bone fitting into a cup-like depression of another bone. So some joints are triaxial, permitting movements, uh, that is flexion, extension, abduction, adduction, and rotation. Examples of ball and socket will include the shoulders and the hip. So at the shoulder joint, we have the head of the humerus fits in the glenoid cavity of the scapula. Whereas at the hip, we have the head of the femur fits into the acetabulum of the, of the hip. So guys, those are the... Those are the six types of the synovial joint. Remember, in the summary of the classification of joints, we have they can be classified either anatomically or physiologically. So anatomically, we have the fibrous joints, we have the cartilaginous joints, and you have the synovial joints. Whereas uh, functionally, we have three. That is, we have abbreviated them as SAD. We have sine arthrosis joints, Ampia arthrosis joints and diarthrosis joints. Diarthrosis joints allow free movement, ampia slight movement, while sine arthrosis, they are immovable joints. Thank you so much.